Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Javin, and today I'm going to be speaking about, oops, did I reveal something? Um, a little bit about this. This is an Azure talk um, of cloud. Um, I've been started pen testing about five, six years ago. Um, started with web application, network security, and then I ended up within the cloud space, and I enjoy doing things for Azure. So this is a lightning talk, so yeah, hopefully <laughs> we get through everything. So to set the scene for, oops, did I re reveal anything? Um, specifically for Azure, they have got something where it's called an Azure Threat Metrics. This is kind of um, like a MITRE attack framework, um, which describes different TTPs uh, for that. And the aspect that we're going to talk about today is within the credential access column. And this is for the resource secret reveal aspect. So just specifically for the Technique AZT605. And for, for number three, there is one aspect for resource group um, deployment history secret dump. So when I was checking this out, I was like, oh, this is something interesting. Um, how can we dump secrets through this? And the reason being why for me it was interesting, if you look at the specific action, um, all you need is read permissions. So what are deployment templates? So these are static files um, stored within Azure. So when you're deploying an Azure resource, let's say if you're clicking in the portal, or you're using Azure CLI, or Azure PowerShell or any infrastructure's code and tool, then there will be a static file that will be created by default. Don't confuse this with Terraform TA state files. That's something totally different. Uh, but even if you're using Terraform, you'll still have a deployment template stored within Azure. This literally just defines what you are deploying. So for example, if I'm deploying a VM, then it'll say, okay, this was a configuration of what you had for your VM, your SKU, your network um, addresses, et cetera. And this is written within JSON. Um, and purely for this one here, what we're going to be looking at for this talk is from an infrastructure as code perspective. So one key aspect about performing this attack is about secure strings. I didn't want to leave no one left behind. But if you don't know what secure strings are, in very layman's terms, this is just a technique to avoid storing sensitive information in plain text. So you can just declare a secure string, let's say if it's a password, and if you want to um, call that um, variable out, then it won't output that in plain text. It's just very simplified in layman's terms. So how is this done in infrastructure as code? So if you're doing, as I mentioned, in um, the portal and you're just clicking through, Microsoft will create your credentials using secure strings for you. They'll handle it. But let's say you're using infrastructure as code, as I mentioned, Terraform or Azure Bicep. Then you would, in Terraform, let's say when you're now creating, in this specific example, a database password, then you would want to have the aspect sensitive true. That will then convert the database credentials as a secure string. And then in Bicep is you have a parameter and you put it as password. Um, you, uh, with a, with a, a password string, then you'll add the secure flag for that. Now, let's look at the offensive technique. So let's say you're on a pen test, you're performing a red team engagement. I won't get into, let's say you have compromised a specific account or anything like that. Is If you go to the portal, um, you've probably seen this before. When I was starting out with cloud, this was something that I, I skipped. Um, because I think, okay, there's not much here. It just literally defines what the deployments are. But if you click on that, there are specific aspects that are there. You will have one aspect where it says inputs. And this is inputs where these are now your defined variables, whether it be usernames or if, let's say, you've created a subnet to be your subnet range. Um, for this one here, if you see at the specific at the bottom, that is the admin password or key. And here is AZ administrator as an example. The other place where um, your credentials or information can come up from, this is within the output section. So let's say you are using infrastructure as code and you deploy a resource. Um, some scenarios you would want to then pull the specific variables out from your outputs. Let's say if it's an IP address. Sometimes developers, they may be output now um, credentials um, or they say maybe output dot um, admin um, password or credential. So that will then be within your outputs section. And then the template, that's literally um, the template for it. So to come back here, that's an example of how a template will look like. Cool. So now let's look at 
what are the other techniques? So that was the Azure portal perspective. Now, there are different types of ways that you can also pull templates out. As mentioned, you can use Azure PowerShell. To use Azure PowerShell, you need the AZ PowerShell module, um, and then you can run this command, get AZ resource group deployment, resource group, and you specify the resource group name. And Azure CLI is just AZ deployment group list, and that will just give you a full list of what the deployments are. And just to recap, on the minimum permissions that you need is the reader role. So if you have the RBAC reader role, you can then read what the templates are. So let's look at a demo of how this looks like. So we looked at initially at how in the portal, this is now if you're using Azure PowerShell. If I can find the play button. Where's the mouse here? Just give me one second. The demo guys are not with me, even with the recording. <laughs> Let me just unplug this. Seems like this Mac froze. Okay. So, why is this? Okay, there we go. So, I'm running this command. I'm just showing you here how this will look like a lot if you, if you run this. Ugh, come on. Okay. This is how it will look like if you run this specific command, um, Azure PowerShell. As mentioned, I'm not going to go through the whole um, compromise um, approach. So this is a whole deployment configuration for, for, for an SDA. So you see, for example, you've got a network security group. I'm just going to pause it here, for example. Um, here you can see you've got your parameters and you also have your outputs section as well. Um, and this will literally define everything. You can see this if you go to a resource group, either way, if you've got reader writes. Um, you'll see that the network configuration if you're clicking through or if you run specific Azure PowerShell commands. But the interesting aspect is for this specific instance, I'll just fall towards the end, is there's a credential here from running um, the specific command, and that is the password there for the SQL Server Admin password. Cool. That is, that is great. So we were able to pull um, Crest for that. So I was curious, okay, this is quite trivial, like it's quite easy. What are the defense measures that Microsoft provides? So I went back to the threat matrix for TTPs and this is what Microsoft says in terms for detection details. It says that if you go to the input page and you see that um, the credentials and clear text and you're not using a secure string, then of course uh, there's an issue here. That's the de detection that is there. That didn't make sense to me. As well in the logs, there's nothing available for, um, for resource or any action. So I also did my research is, are there any specific actions that will trigger this? Um, so I looked at specifically from Log Analytics and Sentinel, and the only ones that I had were right actions. So if, let's say, you're creating a resource and you perform a right action, that writes to it, and that will be within the log configuration to pick it up. But if you are performing read actions of pulling this from a de deployment template, Microsoft sees it as a legitimate use case for your environment, mainly because you have the reader permissions. So inherently, you should be able to read anything. So that's why I came out with this tool for deployment grazer. How can we actually detect, the, uh, detect this in a massive state? So for one example, which I showed you now is, you saw there was a lot of dump from the deployment history. You saw the Azure web, uh, web app, the network security, the database. But in large organizations, if you're constantly deploying within an estate, how will you be able to pick up easily that within this specific deployment file or within a specific resource group or the subscription, where are we actually leaking secrets? Also keep in mind, this is a post-deployment issue. So let's say within your development DevOps pipelines, whether it be GitHub or DevOps, you might have SAS scanning tools or Git leaks, um, try to scan credentials. But assuming that you know, the developers are using, let's say, random functions to create secrets, these secrets are created after the pipeline has been executed. So it won't be picked up within your secret scanning. As well as if you're outputting secrets, that won't be picked up because this is a post-deployment um, technique. So this is a demo of a tool which I created. Hopefully it doesn't crash again. So it's quite simple. Um, I wrote it in PowerShell. So you just import the deployment um, grazer module. 
And what this will do is just, um, it pulls all the different functions that are built up. So if you don't have the Azure PowerShell module installed, that will install it for you, um, as, as well as in your context. Um, this one here, I'd already logged in in the environment, so you won't see the login prompt coming. Um, from here, I'm just gonna pause it there because it goes quite quick, is that you can see the beauty of this is that it tells you what subscriptions are available to the user. So if you're on a pen test engagement and you can see, okay, what is available within my context as well, or if you're performing, trying to detect okay, where are leak secrets within my S stage, you can pick specific subscriptions or specific resource groups. Um, so here I just chose yes, I want to use this specific Azure context, that was just one subscription. And from there to start scanning, um, it's pretty quick. I made it threaded, and it just says, okay, there is one subscription that is there, and it is already scanned it. And you'll see now when I just cat that, it'll tell me, okay, that's where the secret is, is that specific deployment, and as well in that resource group where it's pen testing. Sweet. So remediation, first of all, you want to transform your sensitive data through secure strings. Um, this is quite basic, but I've seen um, it's something where we might skip, because you might think, okay, are my developers actually put in secrets and credentials, but as previously mentioned, this is a post-deployment post technique. Um, be careful as well as outputting, because that can, it's not just for your inputs, but as well as for your outputs. Um, if this does occur within your S-stage, you want to rotate your secrets and as well as purge as well. Um, the next step for what I want to expound on this tool is to provide support for Azure CLI. Um, as well as the Azure API. The reason being for Azure CLI is, let's say, um, you're in a Unix box and you want to use Azure CLI, that's more for Bash. So that's why for Azure API, um, that's literally if you just want to maybe use Python directly interact with um, the Azure environment. And the other useful thing is, which I also want to create, is also DevOps extensions. So maybe get actions. So if maybe your developer is doing this, then is to block these specific um, actions from actually occurring with, within the pipeline, as well as DevOps tasks. And these are useful links for anyone who's interested. Um, if you wanna check out the Azure Threat Metrics, the different type of TTPs, and also that's the link to my tool. Any questions, and thank you. Oh, yes. Wait, okay. No. So not entirely. So let's say if you were creating a database, you will need a connection string. Um, or you'll need basically a username and password, whatever it is. So within my script, I've, I've used common types of secret terms that Microsoft has. So I've got uh, connection strings, um, client secret, that's for if you're using service principles, for let's say app registrations, you're passing that in your app functions. Um, tokens, that is now if you're using a storage account and you've got SaaS tokens, that's a different discussion. I wouldn't say that's ideal for you to be using SaaS tokens. Um, um, and also password as well, because that is mainly for VMs, databases, and things where if you're creating local accounts or things like that. So that's kind of like the regex that I have for the common types of secrets that Microsoft uses, and it will scan that within your deployment. So there's defaults for the different types of deployment? Yes. Okay. Um, and then I'm guessing that you don't have access to the So output is more or less the same. Yeah, so if you're outputting your connection string, um, both, both for Terraform or Bicep or also ARM, it is outputs dot, let's say, connection string or password because you want to output that specific variable for what has been created. There was another question somewhere there. No worries. <laughs> um, it's East African tech guy. Fun fact, yeah, I'm from East Africa, so that's why East African tech guy. <laughs> um, any other question? Yes, sir. Um, no, it's not. No, it's not. But you can contribute as well. <laughs> any other questions?
Cool. Thanks, everyone.